Hello and welcome to the Through the Pain Podcast. This is a place for chronic pain and chronic illness warriors to dare, dance, and dream through the pain. So thank you, Dr. Jackson, for joining me. As I mentioned to you before, it is an honor and privilege to have you on the Through the Pain podcast. Um, I want to give you your roses while you're here. So please introduce yourself to the Through the Pain audience. Hello, Through the Pain audience. Um, (laughs) Dima, it's a pleasure to be here. I am Terry Jackson. That is correct as a doctor before that. I'm a little, well, I've I've accepted Dr. Terry. Um, I really am not a fan of the doctor part, uh, but whatever, you know, I'd accept that. Kind of instead of like the Mr. Terry or the Miss Sarah, you know, Miss Dima, the Dr. Terry will do. You know, it's nice and Southern, I guess, in my opinion. Um, I have sickle cell, SS. Uh, I was the first poster child of the state of Virginia for sickle cell. That was way back in the 80s. Uh, So advocacy has been always a part of my my life. Um, And and also, I would say that that experience really um, gave me a much, uh, a very positive outlook having sickle cell. I, 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 I... it was shocking to me to find out how many people, you know, really are struggling, um, depression and other, and other types of psychological traumas that they're dealing with because they have sickle cell. It was, it was something that caught me off guard um, because I guess as poster child, you know, I got so much attention and, um, you know, I, I felt like I was somebody. I felt like you know, I was special despite the fact that I suffered. And so that shaped my, my, my opinion for my entire life. Um, also, sickle cell has shaped my career. I am a geneticist. The reason I'm a geneticist is because I have sickle cell, and I was just so interested in the illness that I have and that, I, you know, I see other people have as well growing up and I always I was never really interested in like being the doctor being the medical doctor like I always knew there was something behind it um and I don't know how I knew that at such a young age but more like the you know the 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 stethoscope the microscope the 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 cat scan machine you know, all these x-rays, all those things were mo- really like, you know, drew me in more towards science versus being like a, a doctor or, or, or the nurse. And so I always have loved science. And so I follow genetics on a long path to get there. I went to Duke um, and spent a lot of time there. Before I actually did grad school, I actually did specific sickle cell research at Duke. Um, with Dr. Marilyn Tellen in her lab, did that for two years, um, and that helped me get into the graduate program. Then I did plants for that, but 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 I think that the the I was I'm, I was a bit misinformed. I misunderstood the <clears throat> the struggle that people living with sickle cell were having. Because I wanted to just do sickle cell research and from the beginning, really. You know, that's really what my, my, my intent was. But then I was just like, oh, wow, they're about to, you know, this gene stuff is about to happen. Everybody's going to be okay. There's not going to be any more research. I don't know why I had that mentality, but that's really what I, what, what I thought. And I guess it's still, it's part of the, that, re- I'm not talking too much, am I? <laughs> okay. Um... And I guess part of that reason is because the community, uh, it, because we're so rare, right? You don't n- see people with sickle cell every day. And this was right before, well, this was happened basically when social media was, was, was becoming a thing. But the public was not a part of Facebook yet. 
the it was only for college students at first. And so that's what it was when I was making the decision of what I'm going to do. And so I was in graduate school. I'd already picked a lab. I'd been in it, you know, doing it already three, four, five years before they went public. And then I was flooded with this very, very, very um, shocking reality that, you know, there's people just, you know, dying every day. You know, it was just people were passing away and passing away and passing away. And that really, you know, it, it, it hit me pretty hard um, and still does, I guess, now. So I continued, finished graduate school. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the best thing I could do really was, was, was get more into the advocacy of it. Uh, so therefore, that's where I work with Sickle Cell 101, uh, GBT, and the consortium, and the lovely ladies here in Virginia, um, <laughs> let's laugh, Life and Family Foundation, Virginia, Sickle Cell. Um, and I and I and I enjoy it very much. Uh, it takes up most of my time. That's how I got involved with charisma, and so I'm I'm still trying to. I mean, I still want to do some type of sickle cell research. That's, I have a big plan for that. I'm just not doing it really right now. Um, so I guess that's where I am right now. <laughs> what what's going on? Oh, I also. Um, on Tuesdays at four, I also do a Facebook Live with uh, Ferran Dozier. Uh, it's called, what is it called? The Ferran D Show and Terry. Uh, and so we're actually kind of on break still right now because our schedules just aren't matching. Um, but we'll be back. And so I'm very, very pleased to be here with you today. You are doing a lot and your resume precedes you and you're so humble about it. Um, I think I, I I think you're a respected individual within the community. And again, I said to you before, you need to get your roses now and be celebrated right now. Uh, but before, before I have a question for you. You mentioned being a poster child um, for um, a sickle cell organization, your community-based organization. Mm -hmm. And you got a lot of attention. What was it like after being that cute poster child, transitioning and not receiving that attention or those accolades anymore? Did you have a, a weird transition experience? Actually, I would say no, because I was still always invited to everything, right? Like, I would always, like, the, 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 so we had um, mainly, so I got to meet the, the governor. I got to meet the mayor of Richmond, Virginia, the capital. Um, and, you know, I did just, uh, you know, some, uh, some, I guess, special appearances. But I won't say that it was grandiose, like I was on some tour at all, you know. So, so I guess, but we also went to camp every summer. There was a summer camp, and then there was like the, 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 the Christmas dinner. Um, and so I was a part of an organization called VASCAP, Virginia Sickle Cell, Sickle Cell <laughs> Awareness Program. And so, and it was part of basically the university, um, Virginia Commonwealth University. Uh, so, so that kind of just continued up and through my childhood, adolescence, um, actually, even young adulthood, I would continue to be um, a part of that. And they, you know, I was always welcome at everything. Oh, we would go to stuff like the Ice Capades. They'd have tickets to go to the Ice Capades or, or Sesame Street on Ice and stuff like that. We would do all that stuff. Um, and I got to take the whole family with me. And so it never really, there wasn't, the transition didn't really come until way, way later. And then by that time, you know, I was a, you know, a, a young man out there just, you know, doing my thing. And it really wasn't like a big, I guess, deal <laughs> to me because I, I, I moved away. I moved away for college 
and things like that. So those kind of bonds kind of ended until recently, actually. Wow. So you're, you would seem to be, well, you are an academic success within the sickle cell community. Did you feel, did you ever feel while you were in school that you would never make it out of high school, never make it out of college, never make it out of to where you are today as a doctor? Did you, what was no, I never, it's like? I never felt that way. I felt like academia was my safe space. I, you know, like I was the poster child at what, five or six or something. So immediately in the school, right next to the cafeteria, there goes my poster. Right? <laughs> my mom made sure everybody saw it. So, um, you know, the, 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 the teachers and the hospital worked well with when I got sick and I was in the hospital. They sent homework to me and things like that. And that continued really. I would honestly say it continued throughout my academic career um, in school. It ended when I when I went to work work in academia. That's when it hit the fan. <laughs> That's when it's everything kind of changed with how um, I was treated. Even when I was in grad school, like my advisor, this man was the best man possible. He was going to make sure that I had everything extra, you know, the, the, the accommodations he implemented. I didn't, I didn't know any better. I didn't know I could even do all those things. You know, he, he did everything he absolutely could to make sure that I was, I finished and I was a success, including, you know, I remember when the day he came in the lab and he was like, Terry, um, you want to get a undergrad that can help you. So if you go and get sick, your experiments, you don't have to start all over. You can just continue the experiments. And I was like, sure. Then I said, um, well, how many can I have? He was like, as many as you can handle. That's dope. And I was like, did you just say that? <laughs> I couldn't believe he just gave me, open the door to it for me. And because of that, what I did with that opportunity and, and that trust is that I had like an underground railroad for minority students and women to get practical experience in the lab. All my friends came through the lab and they, they helped me and they got a paycheck, you know what I mean? And, and then there were those who wanted to go places like medical school. All of my med students or future med students the last one graduates this May. It had to be about six or seven of them. But for Duke, that's not, in, I would, do, you know, it's not that impressive for Duke. You should expect that. <laughs> they all achieved it. Um, so, so it's not that awesome. But, but the, the, those students are just, they're just a whole different caliber student. So, but I'm still proud of it. You know what I mean? And, I, and, and because he gave me that opportunity um, and because I did that, I then went on to, to, to win an award from the, from the university, the, uh, what was it called? The Dean's Award for Excellence in Mentoring. I won in like 2010, something like that. And, and to me, I, I actually, I, I'm the one who found out about it and wanted it because I really just wanted to, 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 to thank, it was really for my advisor to thank him for what he did for me, you know, because I had people who wanted to put me out <laughs> of school and everything. And he was like, no, 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 no. Those same people had to shake my hand when I got that award, you know, or, oh, and it's to, to show that there's, you know, really this like, okay, you can get in grad school. You, all you can get is A or B. That's it. But that is, and I, I did struggle. I did struggle. Once Duke is on an, an, another beast, and I love academics. It made me not want to ever take a class again. That's how rigorous it was. I won't say it was hard. It was just a lot. It was just an absolutely enormous amount of information. I don't know how the undergrads did it because graduate students only had one or two classes. Anyway, 
Um, yeah, so so it was, I, I was just very, very, very thankful. And so academia was my safe space until I went to work. And then I had a, a, a supervisor who just wouldn't give me the freedom to do my thing. You know, get here at eight, you better leave at five. You know, and, and then I, they knew I had sickle cell. They knew I had doctor's appointments, you know, but it ended up, it still just did not work. It still rubbed this lady the wrong way, and we ended up having a lot of beef because of it. And it was simply because, and it was mainly because she was trying to use my illness against me to, to, to question my performance, but she was also putting me in a box. If you back up, if you say, Terry, I need this, 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 and this by Friday and leave me alone, you'll get it by Friday. I'm not going to be doing it nine to five. You know, I can't do in eight hours what everybody else can. It takes me much longer, but I don't mind that. You know, I'll go because I had to get up and go take breaks and all this stuff. And I got to do all that. And, and she, they wouldn't allow that for no Absolutely no reason. There was no reason for them to act this way. You know, I just had a micromanager. And so therefore, that's when academia and I fell off. <laughs> but before that, it was beautiful. It was always beautiful. Dr. Terry, when will you continue to do research? When will you be back in the lab? <laughs> when I can afford it. <laughs> so honestly because of that experience mainly well not mainly I, I already had this feeling but that just really drove it home that 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 I want to be my own boss my advisor he taught me or almost allowed me to teach myself with the resources easily available to be my own boss I ran a lab in his lab right so he prepared me for that role and so I just honestly just don't want to work with nobody else really like I want to be the boss I want to sit there and be like think up some stuff and tell us I don't want to be the labor I want to be the thinker <laughs> and then have other people go and do it for me so I mean I would like I'm trying to start my own business and I and I and I don't like debt so it's basically been from nothing you know I left California because I needed to come home and help my mother take care of my stepdad and I ran out the door because I believe in myself I believe that I could just start take nothing have this piece of paper that I have in and, and, and nothing other than well you know I do have a nice we do live in a nice place but still I have the basics and I can do the rest you know and it'll take time but um I, I, every step so far has been going good. And so really the plan is to, we have a store here. This is a store that I live in, so to speak. And I'm going to do some other things to make money. And then I'm going to take that money and put that money into stuff like scientific equipment and things like that so I can buy my own equipment. I'm not out there with loans and stuff to do that and then hopefully uh that's kind of like an eight-year plan ish so to speak and then be able to actually do some research i have some other ideas for um research in sickle cell too but i keep those under wraps <laughs> right now but there are things that the community needs um and in, 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 in databases and all this types of stuff in, in, a, in a medical scientific way that, that I would be very happy to, 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 to try to provide or oversee something like a, a sickle cell institute, you know, like we need like an international sickle cell institute. And that's something that I would like to be a part of creating. Um, and with that, hopefully we can actually go back and, and look at, so, you know, there was a big thing about that. Um, there's holes all in the research. There's holes or there's, um, there's bias that 
implicit bias that was put into the research. Kind of, you don't kind of know that you have these biases, but they're there. And so there's a lot of stuff that actually needs to go and be repeated too. Yeah. Um, so, and, and that's kind of hopefully uh, like uh, at the top levels of science and government, they'll see the need. They're seeing a need in general to be able to fund things that you can repeat that are, that, that are being repeated mm. versus some brand new stuff. Because what they usually do, they're just going to fund the first time somebody does it. They're not going to really, they don't want to fund somebody doing it over right. to check. But that's what science is supposed to be. Science is supposed to be repeatable. So hopefully we can do some repetition as well. So Dr. Terry, I'm about to make an announcement that you, that you don't even know. So you're gonna be hearing this with our listeners right now. Um, so question. you, through the pain you have achieved and therefore I think it would be great. You inspired me to create a t-shirt, achieve through the pain. And it's going to be your signature on it. <laughs> and we're going to start selling that. And part of the proceeds can go to anything that you like. So <laughs> you are, are you're going to be, you're going to have your own through the paint shirt that says achieve. So thank you so much for achieving so much through the pain. And once uh, I'll be contacting you for the design and by the time this uh, podcast airs it will be on our website to sell no oh, fantastic <laughs> thank you so much Demon. you're so sweet yeah so um is there anything else that you want to share with our listeners how we can reach you um or how we can support you further uh it's really i i have a million i guess i have a lot of connections on social media on facebook um, Terry Jackson, it looks like me, I have on a lab coat, so it's not like it's the picture of the clouds or something, don't know who it is, that's me. Um, I have a, actually a rather large network of, of, of um, people who are in the sickle cell community through there, so, you know, just hit me up on Facebook. Uh, I'm on, oh, I'm also Doc Biology. Doc biology, that's kind of something that I, I do. Um, it's more, I would like to also, I mean, I have a lot of interests, <laughs> um, but I would like to be very similar to Neil deGrasse Tyson for astrophysics, where he's the face of astrophysics. Um, I would like to do the same and, and, and promote biological sciences all sorts of biology i mean we live here on this planet the only place we know that there's life and because we're here we think it's boring <laughs> you know what i mean it, because we're here it's just like oh it's just an ant you know it, it's just that it, as long as we see it it's you know it's not an alien you know it so, but everybody's fascinated with the stars and it's so cool to watch. And I'm like, no, this is cool. Life is cool. You know, it's, 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 it's magic. It's, it's the closest thing you're ever going to find to magic is life. And so um, I've always wanted to do that, uh, communicate science to the public. So I'm also Doc Biology and I think I have a Facebook page and I have an Instagram for that and probably Twitter and probably a TikTok. I think I have all of them already. It's not much up there, but it's more coming. So yeah, that's how you can find me. All right, and we'll be sure to make sure that all of your information is in our podcast show notes. Dr. Thank Terry, you. thank you so much for achieving through the pain. Thank you for being an example for us. Thank you for just being you and showing us how to achieve through the pain. Well, thank you. They, and um, this is our podcast with Dr. Terry Jackson. And we're coming up next. Watch out for the next episode. Fantastic. For tools, merchandise, and additional information, log on to our website, www.throughthepain.org. This has been a public praise media production.